Hey there, welcome back. Once again, it's time for the Golden Age of DC Comics 365 Days, where I take this beloved hardcover coffee table book given to me by one of my best friends about two decades ago, and it's served my coffee table ever since. And what goes great with a coffee table and coffee table books and coffee table conversations? Pull up a chair, grab a cuppa, it's freshly brewed. Tanzanian pea berry. This stuff is amazing. It's a medium roast. Can you see this, the steam coming off of it? Can we? A little bit. Yes, we can. Hello there. I hope you're having a great day. You know, cracking open a comic book can, you know, be a good part of your day. If it's a story you haven't read yet, it's a story you haven't read in years. It, hopefully, it'll have the power to transport you to another world, escapism, where you can leave this world's many problems behind just for a few moments and, um, and, get, and take a respite in some fiction, which is, uh, you know, it's intention, correct? Well, today is May 3rd. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mom. Hi, Mom. I love my mom. And... Um, and it's May 8th, and we're going to do what we always do. We um, use this book for its intended purpose. It's a 365-day, uh, it's a page-a-day book. Um, 2004 Abrams Press, uh, curated and written by Les Daniels, Chip Kidd, and Jeff Spear. The link is in the description to Amazon, I believe. It's still less than $20. If you want your own copy, it would look great on your coffee table as well. And uh, let's get to it. Today is May the 8th, and my old friend Superboy. Yeah, Superboy is an interesting story. It's Superman as a kid. Yeah, it's kind of basic. but And it was the one of the best-selling titles for DC Comics. Like, their number two title for years. Well, let's get to this. Let's get to this. It's art by Wynn Mortimer. From the cover of Superboy, number 41. This is from June of 1955, the very end of the Golden Age of Comics. Um, it's a good. To, it's a good to note that Superboy was one of the was like I think the only new superhero to get the their own title after World War II. After World War II, superheroes uh, sales were flagging. You know, Flash got canceled. Green Lantern got canceled. They all went back to the the All-Star Comics as part of the JSA. Uh, but let's read the blurb. Mother's Day, uh-oh. In this tale, entitled Pa Kent's Dilemma, Ma Kent, Martha Kent, is spilling the beans, which is something of a dilemma for Superboy as well. Someone shouldn't have slipped Ma that truth serum. What's worse, her faux pas is being witnessed by Lana Lang, who, until the advent of Lois Lane, was the person most likely to expose a superhero's identity. Still, mothers were made to embarrass their sons, and Superboy will get through this, as he did through many stories in which his principal feat was covering his own tracks. Here is the art. And we have all three people here. And they all know who Superboy is, yeah. And, um, yeah, that's Lana. Lana Lang, his uh, high school his high school girlfriend. And uh, she comes back as a grown-up. And there's a love triangle with, uh, you know, Superman, Lois, and Lana. And, uh, of course, Lana, Superboy often helps me with my chores. After all, he's really our son, Clark. Great Scott, under the influence of that truth serum mom is blurting out our biggest secret says jonathan kent and, <laughs> and it was just a it was a cuter day but yeah superboy uh first appeared in more fun comic books in number 101 in january february of 1945 um and he ran pretty much continually um in some form until 1992 and uh, the death of Superman when they, uh, you know, killed Superman and gave us a new Superboy as well. Uh, the Crisis on Infinite Earths in 85, too, took care of uh, 
Superboy and um, historically in canon in the the much ballyhooed and also often convoluted um, continuity of the DC multiverse and universe. And so the when the Bronze Age runs out in 85, we kind of run out of Superboy stories. Now he gets shoehorned in here and there, such as with the Pocket Universe and the Legion of Superheroes. Speaking of Legion of Superheroes, this one's a blast from the past. Um, this is oh, it's falling apart. The 1978 oversized uh, Superboy and the Legion of the Superheroes um, special. And it is the, the wedding of Lightning Lad and Saturn Girl. And it's about, he looks to be about 18 or 19 years old, maybe about 17 or 18. Yeah, look at this thing, it's falling apart. Hello, I know. Holy, holy funny book, Batman. I know, I, I am going to invest in a new copy of this. This micro artwork is just amazing. Um, it's an interesting story. I had this new as a kid, uh, and I read it so much that its cover fell off. And um, it was one of my favorite stories. I loved Superboy stories. I was a kid. And like Robin, Superboy was also a vehicle in which you could be part of the DC universe. And, you know, of course, people would call you Superboy, being a kid running around, pretending to be a superhero. And, um, and Superboy just works when there's not a lot of moving parts it just it's simple it's clark kent as a kid and it works best when he's younger too because comic books should be made for kids as well and to have a young superboy we had a young superboy recently in the modern age um lois and clark have been married for a while uh, i think since 94 and um they have a son named Jonathan, and he's got powers. And he was a super boy for a few years uh, as, a, as a, what appeared to be an eight or nine year old. And it was a really nice attempt at like really good superhero adventure stories uh, and escapism. You had, they were called the Super Sons, and uh, based upon some Silver Age, uh, World's Finest comics, where you had the son of Batman and the son of Superman, you know, in costume with their own adventures. And the father going, a great Scott, what are the boys up to today? And uh, this modern version of the Super Sons was Jonathan Kent, you know, an eight, nine, ten year old kid. And um, the 12 to 13 year old Damian Wayne, son of Bruce Wayne, Robin. So uh, you finally had this team up of Superboy and Robin. That was something I've wanted all my life. Even when I was a kid, I was like, why aren't there any Superboy and Robin team ups? You know, time travel stuff, you know, or why couldn't they have got Robin to, to join the Legion of Superheroes along with Superboy and have their own adventures? And it just, um, that was always part of, I guess, my head canon as a, uh, in my fanfic as a, uh, as a small child growing up. It was a great place to imagine to have Robin being the 30, 30th century at the time because we were in the 20th. Um, yeah, and also it's just amazing too to hear some of this stuff about the publication of, of uh, a Superboy. I mean, through the 1960s, Adventure Comics, that's where Superboy ended up with, uh, with, uh, the, with the Legion of Superheroes, they sold, throughout the 60s, Adventure Comics sold 400,000 copies each with a peak of 480,000 in 1966. And, um, let's see. Superboy was the first superhero. To, I'm reading this from the Wii Key, okay? Superboy was the first superhero to star in a successful solo title after World War II. During the Silver Age of comic books, Superboy was freak frequently the number two best-selling superhero 
with monthly issues of Superboy and Adventure Comics, selling regularly over a million combined copies. And in the modern age where, where 30,000 copies of a, of, a, of a floppy, of a monthly issue of, of Batman sounds great these days. I mean, you have peaks at number one issues at like at 100, 150,000, and they always kind of peter out to some kind of, you know, events sell comic books. They really do. Um, but I watch a lot of programs like such as Thinking Critical with Wes and per, uh, Comics by Perch, where they get into sales numbers and also your boy Zach. Um, and uh, they get into to what's selling and what's the difference between now and then the marketplace the most especially the newsstand and the affordability these were kids could buy a comic book for 10 to 12 cents up to even like i've i've looked it up 60 cents in 1982 when i was a t 9 to 10 years old um 60 cents was the going rate for a marvel or dc magazine and it was what i had in my pocket as well and you had to be really choosy of which one to get because that's the only one you're getting. And they were available at newsstands and the bodega, or the, the corner store, we had spinner racks, and we had very few comic book shops. So there is no newsstand anymore. There's no spinner rack. There's not even um, a shelf at my supermarket in the magazine section. That, that's on like the lower level to catch a kid's eye. These Marvel and the modern Marvel and DC comic books, they go for $3.99, $4.99, and $5.99. Uh, and it's just, I can just, wow, no wonder why they don't sell as well as they used to. They're just, and they're getting lapped by, by manga, which has a, a very affordable interface on their, on their digital app as well. And uh, there's also pirating involved too. You can get any comic book day of release on the internet and the high on, on on the high seas of piracy. You can be reading everything for free. A lot of people do that and then go to the store and be like, "Okay, I liked this, and I'm going to buy the physical copy." Well, that's a nice way to 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 do it. But um, but yeah, these just the days of these million issue sellers are long gone well for a while until maybe you can make a dollar 99 comic where i was going with that earlier that 60 cents in 82 is a dollar 76 today for almost the same kind of product with the same story same characters uh same amount of advertisements um same amount of pages of story i, I think they're still around 22 pages they might have gone down to 20 um but now you know, a dollar seventy six or a dollar ninety nine versus four ninety nine. I mean, this is qui bono, huh? Who's profiting? I mean, these publishing houses will perpetually make money off of these IPs because that's you know where the true value is, not in the monthly stories that we love as comic book fans. So thank you so much for tuning in today's comic book style shop comic book shop style talk thank you so very much for tuning in we're going to talk about comic books every day for the rest of the year so tune in tomorrow 3 p.m u.s eastern and we'll find out who we're talking about when we turn the page tomorrow uh like and subscribe if you could be so kind i would love to earn your subscription we talk about spirituality i'm an ordained minister uh, an amateur theologian hashtag lighten up it's about enlightenment and how spirituality can help improve your daily life. Uh, I'm into that. I'm here for it, and I'm here for you. Check it out. There's a playlist. I'm also a professional chef. I make cooking videos. There's a playlist called What's Cooking? Check that out as well. Let me know if you cook anything. And we talk about comic books every day. Thank you so very much for tuning in. God bless. Good luck. Namaste. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.